Do you have an example where your hyperbola is off center? <laughs> yeah, and this is it. What? This guy, y minus 2 squared divided by 9, x minus 3 squared divided by 4. There's a minus sign in between so. We know it's a hyperbola, so. First, why don't we graph? All right, what do we need? We need uh, the center. Let's find the center. The center. Oh. The center is the opposite of x. Notice they're switched. It's the opposite of x. All right, three. And the opposite of y, two. Oh, so now we found our center. What else do we need? We need our a and our b, our big. And our other one, our big, is going to be three squared. Our other one, a is a two squared. So, what do we do? Run over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 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 I don't want you to meow mix this up. This is just like graphing. Oh yeah, that's a famous video. <laughs> annotations um comments below um i need to go how far in the y direction first i find my center my center was at three two and it is at three two Ooh. so from my center how far in the x direction do i go i go too far in the x direction and some of you guys say I go too far all the time. So I go too far in the x direction because it's under the x. It goes to left, bam, to right, bam. Then how far do I go in the y direction? I go three far in the y direction, three far in the y direction. So I go three up, one, two, three, bam. And I go three down, one, two, three, bam. And then I make a box. I connect the diagonals of my box. Whoa, that one's yeah. A little more slanted. Then we figure out which way it opens up. It opens away from the negative variable. Which one's the negative variable? Why? No. He's all positive. The minus sign is in front of the x. So it opens away from x. It opens up and there's x. It opens away from x. So it comes from this asymptote. And then it's all it kisses the box right there. So now that we've graphed that guy, let's find the foci. I'm so foci. The foci lie on the inside of the hyperbola. I guess there isn't really an inside. It lies on the side that cups the foci. So in order to do that, we need to see that this is going to be big squared minus small squared, that's going to be c squared. Now that's not a minus, that's a plus. Why? It's a minus when you're dealing with ellipse because the foci are inside. It's a plus when you're dealing with the hyperbola because the foci lie on the outside. So we need to add distance and not subtract it. So here we go. That's my big. My big squared is 9. Boom. Plus, that's my small. My small squared is 4. Sure, that's going to be c squared. So we see this is going to be 13 is c squared. We take the square root of both sides, but we're not going to forget the plus or minus square root of 13. Now that's going to be our c. What do we do with our c? We add and subtract it from our center, but not just any component of our center. Oh, if we add it and subtract it to x, it's going to be out here. 
We don't want that. We want to add it and subtract it from our y. Our center was 3 comma 2. Let me check and see if that was our center. Oh, it was. So then what? Am I adding to the x or the y value? If I add to the x, I'm here. If I add to the y, I'm there. I'm adding to the y value. That's why we add that to 2. So my foci gonna lie, square root of 13, where's that? A little bit bigger than 3, smaller than 4. 9 and 16, 13 is like right in the middle, like uh, 3.6 or something like that. So we go up 3 and a little bit from here. So we go up 3 and a little bit from there. 1, 2, 3, and a little bit. Bam! Right about there. So what is that point? Did I change the x? No. I changed the y. That's why this is 2 plus the square root of 13. Then, I also go from that center and I want to find the other foci. So I go down 3 and a little bit more. So this is 1, 2, 3, and a little bit more. And that's that component. Am I adding it to the x or am I adding it to the y? I'm adding it to the y, subtracting it from the y. So this is 2 minus the square root of 13. Whew, that's mean. We found our foci, but wait, there's more extra credit. Well, no because this is a video and I don't have the authority to give you extra credit. But what do I want? I want the asymptotes, the equation of them. This guy, boom, boom. What do you need to find the equation of a line? Those are lines. Whose lines is it anyway? It's that hyperbola's lines. You need a point. Ha, huh? why don't we pick that one? It's shared by both. And then you need a slope. In order to find a slope of a line from a graph, you need to find the rise over the run, and then I see that this is gonna be, boom. How far does it run? One, two units. How far does it rise? Boom. One, two, three units. That's why your book has that whole A over B thing, and you were like, I don't get it. So then, what do we have? We have a slope of three halves. Mm, slope is three halves. And then the point is, 3, 2. The point is 3, 2. Boom. They both share that point. This one has that slope. So we go when we either throw it in y equals a max plus b or point slope. So um, y minus y1 is mm, slope x minus x1. All right. We put that in there. This is y minus 2. That's going to be equal to 3 halves x minus Two. All right, finish him. Acabalo. So then this is y is equal to oot, oot, three halves x. Boom. That's minus three plus two is plus five. Nope, that ain't right. So three. That's minus three plus that. That's. I shouldn't have step skips. Don't step skips. Minus 3 plus 2 is a minus 1. Huh. Clearly, this goes through minus 1. Psh. Not to scale. Anyways, let's just make sure the center is 3, 2, 3, 2. Slope is 3 halves, 3 halves. I have that point, that slope. Did this. Boom. 3 halves. Uh huh. Boom. Minus 3 and plus 2 is minus 1, so <clears throat> you get the picture. How do you get this one? You need the point. Bam. 3, 2. You need the slope. This time, bam, boom. Looks like it rises. 1, 2, 3. And it runs. 1, 2. In the negative direction. And then you finish. I can't do everything for you. We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time.